Yo, what up? It's another uh, Impartial Theorist coming at you from the Wart Record Room. So, Blackface is in the news, and who brought it here? Well, you probably don't know, but Drake. Well, actually, push a T, but Drake. But, uh, <laughs> so if people ha haven't uh, ch checked it out, um, Drake dropped Duppy freestyle. Which has been forgotten about immediately. Yeah, mm -hmm. and within a day, Pusha T responded. Yeah, which is more impressive than Drake, because people thought Drake responded within a day. He actually, like, again, I'm going to bring up Charlevoix, but Charlevoix had the album a week before, and Drake is Drake. Charlevoix is Charlevoix. So Drake had that shit probably either a week before, same as Charlemagne or before. So he had a week to respond to this shit. So it's not that, it's even still not that fucking impressive. But Pusha T had a day. He legit had less, it was like 18 hours. Like, that is wild. Like, I'm already showing my bias, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. and so the picture he used for the uh, video um, is a picture of Drake um, from 2000, what, 7, 2008, something like that, uh, in blackface, which was. I don't know. They, they, it, originally, people were saying it was to promote a clothing line, but Drake clarified that, said that it was about portraying the struggle of African American actors. Which I don't know. It's all just confusing to me because it's like a Canadian company that was. It's called Jim Crow Couture. By two black dudes. In Canada, though. Yeah. Which. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. Just, just for just to make it easier for everybody to process, there was no white people involved in this shit. It was all black people, if you count Drake, which some people are starting to say he's not really black anymore. <laughs> At least he can't say the N word anymore. Shit. Oh not, yeah, that's yeah. people are saying that. Yeah, legit. But anyway, it was all black people, and they kind of co-opted American Jim Crow shit and tried to make a statement on it. It was like 11 years ago, and apparently that shit was just on the website. Then Pusha T, somebody sent it to Pusha T, and Pusha T put that shit as his, as his album cover. But the shit that interests me is that Pusha T knew about this shit way before. Because if you look at the first song where he dissed Drake, he talks about Drake, about Drake acting like fucking, like, Uncle Tom, not Uncle Tom, like Jim Crow, like fucking dancing around, tap dancing for white people. He, talk, he talked about that shit, and... The next when Dick Drake this him and this next song, he puts the fucking like Jim Crow Drake shit, which just connects to the first fucking lyric, which makes his pre in his initial diss even better. Cause now you get the context. Cause with Pusha T, most of the time the shit he says can go over your head. Cause like those double, triple, fucking quadruple and thunders that I'm not about that shit. Mm -hmm. I want to dive that deep. But, oh yeah, and speaking of. Going a little deeper lyrically, uh, that track actually did go quite a bit deeper, and he uh, calls out Drake for an alleged uh, child that he had with uh, former porn star Sophie. What was her last name? Brousseau. Yeah. French. He was never really a porn star. She did solo videos of her just walking around draping in fucking oil. Oh okay. Which, I never, I've never heard of her before this. So yeah, she's a I French. Mean, she's a French. She's French born. Yeah. Okay. You even understand what the fuck they're saying in the first place? But, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, apparently, uh, I, th I think it was TMZ had texts from her that were allegedly from Jake Drake, <laughs> telling her to get an abortion, um, and then around the time or like shortly or. About nine months later, or eight months later, she had a baby, and she has the baby, and so it's apparently Drake's kid. Although Drake hasn't yet acknowledged it. He he had a press release clarifying the blackface thing. Yeah, but the other but, shit isn't really, like, it's a diss, it's shock, it has shock value, because Drake has a fucking kid, but it was just make kid. But I feel like that was just used to connect him to his dad and basically say you're doing the same shit your dad did and you're hurting your mom while I was doing this because that's the thing he cares the most about his mom then he made, he made Drake's mom look like some fucking cat woman in a house by herself 
ever since ever since Drake was born, she's been lonely and fucking sad, and now she's like seventy something. He made she, she all the Loki was a diss. So all that shit was a diss to Drake's mom. <laughs> I know that's what's so crazy about it. It's like he drops this like major bombshell, yeah. which was sort of a rumor, but now is like pretty much confirmed. I that, guess that that was just a tool to aid because the diss that we hear is different from the diss that Drake he, Drake hears. Drake's Drake hears a breaking down of his whole like self. We we hear the shock value shit like his friend is dying and shit. Even though the friend is dying, shit was just vicious. Oh yeah, well, that that too. That was yeah. uh, that was too in there savage. As well. And I that mean, was... very direct. Yeah, like when 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 calls when you, out a yeah. dude dying. Like even he TikTok, spoke, TikTok, yeah. Like, yeah. Talks, <laughs> his yeah. life is like, just counting down. The thing the thing I realized about Pusha T is when his lyrics get simple, that's when he's trying to hurt you. Because you remember the son shit? Like he said, like a double, triple on thunder, and he went into, you have a son. Like he said that flat out, like just a sentence. That was not a rap. That was not a rhyme. Nothing. Like when he does that shit, he's t- that he's talking straight to fucking Drake, and he's he's trying to break him down, which he did. Cause dude released a press release for a fucking diss song. You release another diss song. You don't release a press release if you're gonna release some other shit. But anyway, he fucked up Drake's money. Cause it's a, it's, it's the diss is multi layered. But if we go into it, we'll talk about about it this whole episode. But anyway, Drake did blackface. He fucked up, and now he's kind of hiding, as of now. So shit, maybe my next week some shit will actually happen. But yeah, uh, <laughs> I mean, I could see Drake. Yeah, he, he yeah, he's not done. He's, uh, but it'll be interesting to see how he comes back from this. Um, he can't really, cause whatever he says, Pusha T's gonna release more. And he has more on him. Because this is... He's planning this shit out step by step. If Red was the bait. Drake took the bait. And he fucked up. And if, like, Loki, he preempted the fucking blackface shit in that fucking song. And he still took the bait. So what if there's more shit that we don't even know? I feel like he's preempting some mom shit. Because that's the shit that really hit. Yeah. And if he brings up some mom shit, he might go bring up all the mom's boyfriends that never worked out. And they're gonna say it's because of Drake or some shit. <laughs> like it, it might just be some shit that would hurt him even more. And as he's already lost millions of dollars off this added ass deal that he fucked up. Like now they have to restructure all that shit. And now his new album is gonna be irrelevant because now he has to talk. He has to address the blackface. He has to talk about his son. And he has to figure out a way to come back and push a T in order to make that shit like sit well with people. Yeah. That's a hard fucking thing. <laughs> All I'm saying is that he shouldn't do it. Yeah. Like CNN is talking about Drake in blackface. He just got a little too confident. He was getting yeah. too cocky, and I mean, it, it wasn't really even like he was kind of maybe even overstepping a little bit, going after Kanye to the level he did. Cause... No, Kanye's been playing a fool. Yeah, but most if you realize, most of that this this song was about Kanye. It wasn't about Pusha T. Mm-hmm. He doesn't have shit on Pusha T. He said you're old and you didn't write and you didn't actually sell that many drugs. Those were the two things he said. <laughs> he didn't really hit him that hard. So it's Kanye that he tried to go at his court. Yeah. Yeah. Talking about um, you owe me and I, I, it's a whole bunch of shit. I'm not going to get into it. Anyway, let's talk about some more interesting shit. <laughs> Roseanne. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Roseanne's show, uh, basically, uh, so she responded to a tweet, there was like some, I don't need it. I forgot what the original tweet was, something about, oh, an investigation is like showing all the crimes Obama committed or something, and then like, somebody mentioned Valerie Jarrett, and then just kind of out of nowhere which I don't even know who these Twitter accounts were it seemed like just some random like conservative Twitter that's who, um, she, that's who she engages with most yeah. of the time but yeah so then she tweeted Muslim Brotherhood <coughs> plus Valerie Jarrett or no Muslim Brotherhood plus Planet of the Apes equals Val- VJ Valerie Jarrett so yeah. and then uh, I think the first thing was Wanda Sykes said she would be like leaving the show 
And then within a few hours also, of that, ABC announced they were just canceling yeah. it. Also, what's her name? Shit. Uh, this this girl. Fuck. I don't. She's she's a comedian. She used to, she was writing for the show and she quit like a week before, just because she was like, "Fuck this shit." Conservatives are fucking with that shit too much. I don't want to. Whitney Cummings. That's who. Yeah. She quit before oh, yeah. this this shit happened. Which makes her just look that much better. But the thing that really interested me, and I heard I, I heard this shit on a podcast, and a dude called Andrew Schultz pointed this shit out. If you if you look at the insult, he said the woman is Persian and Black American, mm-hmm. so she's African American and Persians are Muslims. So the, the 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 biggest insult she come up with for Black people was comparing them to apes. Like, like, break trying to find a real insult. But for Muslims, she just said Muslim Brotherhood. The Muslim Brotherhood runs Egypt. They're just a political party. Some people might say they're terrorists, but low key, they're just like. Well, they're like a pretty conservative. Yeah, political like, party. Yeah. Yeah. So she all like for the Muslim side, the worst insult she come up with is that you're Muslim. You know how racist you have to be to say you are you. Look at you. Like, just say you are you. Like, basically, in her mind, Muslims are fucking. Come on the fucking earth. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, I watched. Uh, I don't really fuck with this guy a whole lot. I know he's kind of controversial, T.J. Kirk, but I thought he had a really good response to the uh, the Roseanne situation. Actually, it was more of just like a satire, which blames it all on Tim Allen, and that the whole thing was masterminded by Tim Allen so that he could be the only conservative sitcom. Uh, because Roseanne was like taking over and gaining so much popularity and he was salty about it but it's actually pretty funny but um, that was like another thing that he talked about was uh, how honestly the Muslim Brotherhood comment should have been like more offensive to yeah. people but no one even like talked yeah. about that so like that's that's <laughs> yo do you know how much disrespect that is like Loki she thinks that bad like I I uh. I wouldn't have thought Roseanne thought thought less of black people, thought, thought more of black people than Muslims. I mean, like black people are more are close are, are closer to actual people than Muslims are closer to actual people. So if you're a black Muslim, what are you? <laughs> like that one's fucked up her mind. Like she probably can't even process that shit. Yeah, she probably doesn't doesn't even know. I don't know. Yeah, she probably just say black Muslim. Because, yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, like, the ape shit was racist, but the Muslim shit was racist. Because she didn't say shit. And she tried to connect it to Planet of the Apes. It was never fucking Planet of the Apes. She just called her an ape. And she's done that shit before. She did it with um, Cond- Susan Rice, or was it Cond- something Rice? Susan Rice, I think. It's the old Obama something. Oh, really? Yeah. She, called, she, it. she called her... A woman with, with um, group with monkey or baboon ball sacks, like big swinging baboon, like some mm-hmm. monkey, some primate ball sack. Okay. And that got her in trouble too. Also, the fucking... that was before she had a show on ABC again. No, no, no. That that was yeah. That was before she got it again. Yeah. But after she had, it had the previous run had stopped, and she also did the Hitler shit with the dressed up as Hitler and baked a bunch of fucking gingerbread cookies which were supposed to be Jews and baked that shit to a crisp like, like burnt for that what? shit for a photo shoot oh yeah yeah I don't know what the fuck that photo shoot is but oh shit this is the second talk of photo shoots and this shit people making <laughs> dumb choices but Roseanne didn't even really get in trouble for that shit but now this shit is the shit that gets her in trouble I, I guess that it should well, I feel a type of way because 200 people lost their fucking job because of one fucking racist person. Um. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think that... Well, yeah, because I, I guess that's the thing, too. It's like, this was ABC's biggest show. Mm-hmm. I guess, like, by a pretty... Or, like, by a fairly large margin, so... Um, which is kind of crazy because... I mean, I think that does kind of put down the argument that ABC just did it because they want, like, they were looking for a reason to. Like, I'm sure they probably wanted to keep it going. Like, yeah, but this was this is too far. Yeah, yeah. She she crossed the line. Like, you 
her boss is a black woman. You can't be doing that. Yeah. Shit. Well, yeah. I think even like, or Bill O'Reilly chimed in. Yeah. I don't like yeah. well, even who knows what the fuck he's done, but he yeah. said something like, uh, "Yeah, ABC had to choose like the either go with like a high rated show or lose like millions of fans on like a personal level." So. Yeah. Because Bill O'Reilly is racist stage one who was on in stage <laughs> five. Bill O'Reilly yeah. might say nigga in his head. I don't think you actually say it out loud. He's that kind of racist. Like, he doesn't think he's that racist. He thinks he has prejudice, which all of us have. But his prejudices are racist. But even if he can see that, like, anybody should be able to see that. And But anyway, Roseanne couldn't because she is Roseanne. And she blamed Ambien for the shit. And I'm being clapped back Saying that uh, We have a lot of side effects But one of them isn't racism Which is like Q fucking What's that gif The The black dude I don't You, you put that shit up Yeah Does the gif You fuck Why am I still talking about the gif You gotta do all this shit I forgot what I was talking about Yeah is it Gif or gif Fuck it Shit You gotta cut every All of, like For five minutes out Just cut that shit out yeah, GIF, GIF. I mean, I just don't know which one you're talking about. I'm trying to not talk about it and remember what I fucked up about before. <laughs> oh, the Ambien? Yes. Yeah. Shit. Um. Yeah, I mean, you can't really blame it on Ambien, but also, I mean, I think uh, I saw Philip DeFranco, he kind of, like, called out Ambien also for kind of all the side effects. That <laughs> yeah, but they're, they're, f- fucking, they're fucking, like, medicine. That's just... How it is yeah but i mean it just by the way does include like suicidal thoughts yeah and, like bizarre but, distorted thoughts fuck, or something even like even fucking what's the name of the shit the shit for your dick um uh you, viagra yeah even viagra could can it can bring about suicidal thoughts it yeah. does a shit ton of drugs i mm. could look it up uh well, i kind of want to look it up <laughs> i mean yeah i don't know i mean i think ambien it's just crazy, like, in 2018. Uh, again, I'm quoting Philip DeFrank out here, but crazy that even pharmaceutical companies are giving clapbacks on Twitter. Mm-hmm. But but also, like, still fuck pharmaceutical companies, you know, so <laughs> it's, like, hard to get that much behind it. I guess that's just where I'm coming from. It's like, it yeah. was a nice move. Like, no one's got your back, Roseanne. But <laughs> quit trying to... Yo, but... No, nah, actually, but... conservatives do got her back. Because they try to get back, get back at liberals with... What's the name of that dude? Fucking... He's Bill Maher? T- yeah, Bill Maher. And people were like, cool, take Bill Maher. <laughs> like, that's... Yeah. Yeah. They're like, yeah, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. And then pointing the gun at Bill Maher, too. Like, nobody... Nobody gives a fuck if you get Bill Maher. Like, they want him out of here. He pisses a lot of people off. Yeah. But anyway, they so especially liberals. Yeah. <laughs> and then after, after the Bill Maher shit kind of fizzled, Samantha B said, compared Ivanka said not compared said Ivanka Trump is a cunt, which I think is a fantastic word. Americans should use them more. You guys are scared of the word like it's some other shit, but she called her a cunt, and then. People started calling for Samantha B to be fired. The White House did, which I think is kind of wild. But yeah, after they did that, a bunch of sponsors left her. And but she's not gonna get fired. They're not gonna fire her for shit. But she she got the Fox News treatment. The lose all your sponsors and have to have like three major sponsors that you have to keep. Really? Yeah. Damn. Yeah. She'll get them back. This this the new. It's like the way what happens with YouTube. Shit happens, they leave for like six months, come back. Yeah. I mean, it's a comedy show, and... Yeah, but after the Roseanne shit, companies were like, yo, is is it the same as the Roseanne shit? They have to weigh it. And if they have to weigh it, most likely they're going to say fuck it, because they're spending money weighing the the fucking consequences of somebody's actions. Like, they probably will come back, but like, for now, just sit it out. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway... So she got in trouble, which I thought was like she did call it cunt, but a lot of people on the internet too did after Samantha B did. Sally Field called fucking Ivanka, said Ivanka is too is is not good enough to even be a cunt. She said cunts are lovely, warming, nurturing, and Ivanka Trump isn't. Yeah, 
I mean, oh, I think there's what you said before that um, cunt just kind of gets taken to be too seriously. Yeah, nobody word, else, only like, America cares about that word. Like, they treat it like it's nigga. And it's not. It's, it's, uh, Irish people say that shit for breakfast. Are you kidding me? First thing they say when they wake up is you cunt. And I'm, we're not going to bleep that. We're going to leave it in. Let it resonate in your mind. Let that shit bounce yeah. around. Maybe let it take a shower, get used to it. And then wash your shit again. Because you guys freak out about the word. But shit. Well, I mean... I feel like Samantha B uses... This is that like every five episodes. I don't even really watch your show, but I'm mean, Jim Jeffries. <laughs> Yo, it's not I, like I want. I want to show you. I feel like there's just even worse things she's probably said even in that episode that could be like taken more offensive. But no, yeah. I, I kind of want to show you this shit that you will take offensively. Yeah, this shit. On the air. Just own it. You could call it a hobby, but it's a hobby. Call me a cunt. I'll call you a cunt. You don't have to come to my house. I don't have to come to your house. You can f off. I'll f off. And that's the kind of freedom we should celebrate in this country every day. <laughs> I agree. Shit. That's pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> um. You ready to get into it? Yeah. Um, so. <laughs> the next. Yes, one of. I, one of America's favorite conservatives, Dinesh D'Souza, <laughs> is getting pardoned by Trump, like, retroactively, I guess, because he was already convicted of a felony. Um, but, so, if people remember this movie, this was like a theatrical, it came out in movie theaters, and actually a bunch of people went to see it in 2016, called Obama's America. Um, yeah, conservatives just, like, ate that shit up. And... It played over a thousand theaters in late August 2012, and more than 2,000 theaters by September, and grossed uh, more than 33.4 million dollars, and it's the fifth highest grossing documentary style in the United States. So, I don't know, I actually completely forgot about this, but I do remember when it came out, but have you ever heard of this movie? It basically, uh, well here, let's say, uh, It, well, okay, the film has basically been criticized because it includes considerable projection, speculation, selective borrowing from Obama's autobiography to prove D'Souza's own narrative. Um, I think that's kind of just his style. I've watched, like, a few debates with him. I'm not really impressed with his style. And uh, he's a weird guy. Anyway, um, so he pled guilty in 2014 um, on federal charges of making a $20,000 in illegal campaign contributions to the United States Senate, or to the New York Senate. Um, yeah, and then for causing false statements to be made to the FEC, Federal Election Commission. Um, so then he was sentenced to five years probation, eight months in a halfway house, which it's in a thirty thousand dollar fine, which is clear whether he served the eight months already. It's unclear whether. But um I don't know. So apparently on so and then on Wikipedia, it's already updated in here. President Donald Trump granted D'Souza a full pardon, claiming on Twitter that the author activist was treated very very unfairly by our government. You said you did some wild shit. You said some wild shit, and you got in trouble for it. Why? Why do Republicans freak out when they get punished? No Republicans. I'm not. Not all Republicans. These fucking like fringe conservative people. Like they don't think they can get punished. They can just do whatever the fuck they want. And when they get punished, it's it's taking away their freedom of speech. Well, no, no, no. This is about an illegal campaign contribution. Oh. I mean, that's what it was actually. He was convicted okay. of this for yeah, like basically. 
Um, yeah, I thought it was for the fucking movie. If it was, well, fucking. no, that's that's why they're saying because it's like he made this anti-Obama movie, so which saying, did really well. So they're saying like, he's saying that that's why they're punishing him. Yeah. Oh, so they're trying to change. Yeah, and argument. I mean, I think D'Souza has himself has like put forth that argument that yeah, he was like a political target, and that's why. But I mean, I'm sure if you actually went through the case, like. But he did say in his in his like hearing that he knew that causing a campaign um, contribution to be made in somebody else's name was wrong and something that he shouldn't have done. He knew that it was against the law, and he said he regrets it. So he acknowledged that he fucked up. So he didn't even get that that bad of a punishment. Like he got the white fucking billionaire punishment, and he's not a white person, and he's not a billionaire. Yeah, um, I guess also <laughs> Trump uh, fired the uh, the judge, the U.S. attorney uh, prosecutor who prosecuted him, Preet Bahara. Oh yeah, he did that a while ago. Another Indian dude. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, Trump did some wild shit. But yeah, so I don't know. I mean, I guess that's that's going to be one of those things that kind of falls on where your what your political views are. I, I don't guess think it's you, about political views, though. Well, I mean, conservatives, I think, probably really believe that Dinesh D'Souza was like only prosecuted because I mean, they, they believe that Trump is only they they believe that the whole fucking Russia investigation is just for political reasons. So I mean, of course, they would have believed that this is just for political reasons. So and I mean, he did a pardon, like I. There's not a whole lot of outrage about it. People are just like, oh, yeah, okay. No, that, that kind of is, because Trump is about to start. This is going to be a thing for him. Yeah, just basically picking all political... Yeah, celebrities. Because yeah. even though the last one that he did was, he gave a pardon to to a black boxer that was, that was convicted of some shit that he didn't do, that people on the right, on the left, really wanted to happen. He did that because the dude was also kind of a celebrity. Even though he was dead or he's dead already, his story was known. And that's, it's just, it's basically like popular culture pardons. That's what he's doing. Like, Dinesh D'Souza was, is known in popular culture, like yeah. American culture. So he pardoned him. He's not pardoning the regular dude. He's pardoning celebrities, whether alive or dead. And it's going to start a trend. But it's already a trend because he's done it twice. In the last in the last couple of months, but anyway, let's move on to some other shit, more Trump shit. Yeah, Trump just put steel and aluminium tariffs on fucking Mexico, which I kind of respected that. The EU and also fucking Canada. Why Canada though? But anyway, wait, really? Yeah, because I thought he like. Canada already like made a big deal about it and then he like he, promised not to. He's fucking Trump. What the fuck? Why are you. That's Trump. That's just him. Yeah. He makes promises he doesn't keep. <laughs> but anyway, he, he, he imposed a 25% tariff on steel and 10% on aluminium. So American companies are about Loki about to be fucked. Because there's not enough to supply the country. Like, people think because America is huge and shit, they can fucking sustain all the shit with just America. That's not how fucking comparative and absolute advantage work. Like, that's not how that shit works. You need partners to trade with. Like. Yeah, and kind of just funny little, uh, so I write for Middleton newspaper and, like, there's a pretty big developer who's got this ongoing develop that the city gave a lot of uh, tax incremental financing, essentially like tax breaks to build it. Uh, I think like to the tune of about $10 million, but now he's asking for more, 600,000 more. And he's saying that the reason is is because the tariffs, essentially. Oh, he's like, going to come back and ask for even more now. The costs, yeah, yeah, the costs of construction have gone up. And... Um, I don't think that's really that debatable. Just, that Apparently, a lot of developers have been talking about this. Is like all the 
everything that's getting bidded out, that bids are going way up, materials are going way up. That was all so, speculation. I'd even been been enforced yet. Now it's actually gonna be enforced. So shit is about to spike. Yeah. So I mean, it could actually slow down the economy. I mean, if it. I mean, this is an area of rapid development in Madison, in Dane County, which is an area of rapid development. And, I mean, you have one of the biggest developers saying, I mean, of course, he's, you know, protecting his own interests and looking out for his bottom line. But, I mean, that's just what the reality is and what all developers are doing. So, um, I think... And it was kind of funny because uh, one member on this committee who's like a uw madison professor uh kind of pointed out or i guess to kind of quote him he's like the irony isn't lost on us that a developer president Mm -hmm. who like vowed to like cut government or like basically a developer president is making it harder for developers yeah Yeah. well well europe and He's gonna make it out of anybody else because Mexico, Europe, and fucking Canada have already put plans in place to retaliate. Mexico is gonna put tariffs on lamps, pork, fruit, cheese, and steel, flat steel. Europe is gonna put tariffs on motorcycles, which means Harley Davidson is dead because they're already in bankruptcy. So that's one company that's fucked. Denim. <laughs> Which means it's no longer going to be Wrangler jeans and shit everywhere. Or Levi cigarettes, cranberry juice, and peanut butter. And then the EU, the Canada said they're going to put $12.8 billion tariffs spread across everything. Which, yeah. It just costs a shit ton of money to the economy. And just a bunch of industries. Beer is going to become more expensive. It's fucking aluminium. Yeah. Yep. Um, or aluminum, whatever you guys say. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't know, I'm kind of uh, split with that. I, I mean, I just feel like I can't, as an American, start saying aluminum. I mean, I think it makes more <laughs> sense, but it's just people would think I'm weird. But even though I think aluminum just sounds like... It sounds like a retarded person. And it just, yeah, it just seems like it was probably, like, dumb... Yeah, but I was people talking, at the time that just made it into aluminum because they couldn't say aluminium. I wasn't even talking about aluminium, man. I was talking about the tariffs. How do you feel about the tariffs? Uh, um, <laughs> well, I understand what you're saying about aluminium. Yeah, um, we're. I, I mean, we're just headed to this like isolationist state, I guess. And I don't know. I don't think it's going to be good. I mean, I think we were just kind of getting to the point where we are figuring out how the global economy can yeah. work, and now we're just saying, fuck it, and, but it's inevitable. I mean, I think we were just at that point where the global economy is just, you know, necessary. I mean, it's been building for, like, hundreds of years, but I think, and there's been hiccups along the way, but I think, like, we still gotta keep moving there, so this is just gonna fuck shit up. And just make everybody's life worse. Mostly Americans, because the other countries are still going to trade with each other. Mm-hmm. You're blackballing yourself. Like, why would you do that? And it's just going to make everything more expensive. Which yeah, is kinda like for Americans. A tax. F- only for Americans. Because Canada will just go, if they need fucking steel, if they need whatever they need. They can get it from Mexico. They can get it from the EU. America is just going to be this big fucking island in the middle. That's fucking suffering. Like, this is, yeah. And if Trump keeps doing this shit, because he, he, they're already putting tariffs on China, which I understand why they think they have to do it, but his approach is too aggressive. He's, and China's low-key one of the most powerful people in the world right now. Like, you want to fuck with them? Like, most powerful countries in the world. You really want to fuck with them? Like, low-key, we don't know how powerful they actually are. But, well, he did it, so shit, let's stop talking about it. <laughs> When, when shit starts to rise, uh, it'll be like a dollar more. It'll, it'll, if you have a family and shit, if you have to save money and shit, then it's bad. But shit, I don't buy shit, so fuck it. You guys will suffer. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, you know, I guess that uh, that's our show. That wraps it up. Yeah. All right. Well, join us next week as we um, you talk know, about some probably some more Kanye just, shit, some more Trump shit, yeah, some more Drake and Pusha T shit because yeah, and just you know continue to yeah track the downfall of this country. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's very interesting. 